sometimes in life you have to take risk because without risk, without failure, there is no success. Welcome everyone. This is the Reverend CEO, AKA Cynthia Petion, wife, mother, business coach, mentor, and evangelist. And I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, welcome everyone to today's episode of Faith in Business. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Eddie Petion. Uh, we not only share the same last name, but we share the same home, business. I think we share a couple of kids together as well, a couple of dogs and a, a cat. <laughs> uh, but we wanted to invite him here today to discuss the concept of, of being an entrepreneur versus being an employee and the importance of managing and running your own business, uh, which we also do together. So Mr. Pettyon, welcome to our segment today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Reverend Cynthia, and um, thank you for having me on the call today. Um, glad to be here. Um, I know you are a huge fan of uh, Robert Kiyosaki, and uh, you have followed a lot of his teachings. And one of the things I know he talks about in particular is, you know, entrepreneurship versus being an employee and uh, the type of education most of us receive growing up, and how it pertains to how we build wealth or make money. And why did you feel that it was an important topic to discuss today with us? Well, um, you know, I really wanted to discuss this because it's uh, also a reflection of my own life. And um, a lot of people need to understand on the difference of being an entrepreneur and being an employee. So the importance of being an entrepreneur and just being successful in life in general, the number one thing in my life and the number one thing that I put first is God, because everything that you do reflect around him. God has a plan for every single one of us and he always delivers. You know, we didn't always have what we have today. About 20 years ago, probably more or so, uh, I was in college, a uh, very young age. And within my first couple of years of college, I started flunking. Why? Number one, I was surrounding myself with the wrong type of people. However, I knew that God had a plan for me. And one day I was just driving my car and saw these two military personnel coming from a laundromat. And they were very sharp. So I decided I was like, you know what? Maybe I need to take a different direction. I dropped out of college and went straight into the army. From there, that's when my life started changing. You know, to discipline, what I've learned, leadership skills, there. And, but I was only there for about three years. But during my second year, I said, do I really want to keep doing this for the rest of my life? And I started thinking in my civilian life, what do I want to do? So I started educating myself and uh, reading books. Well, one of my favorite books that I came across was Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by Robert Kiyosaki. And that's when I really start learning on how to be a true entrepreneur. But things that he mentioned is that what the school system teach us versus what you can learn on your own. So one day he actually went to his dad who had a PhD, very successful uh, doctor. And he asked his dad straight up. He said, um, I want to learn about money. How do you make money? And he was only about nine years old. And his dad looked at him and said, what are you talking about? You're supposed to just go to school and get a job. He said, well, well, what do you mean? He's like, because that's what we do. We go to school and you get a job. And he's like, no, no, I, I, I want to know how to make money. He's, he's like, well, that's not what they teach you in school. In school, they're gonna teach you how to get a career so you can get a job in, in life. Well, how do I know about money? He's like, well, you will earn a paycheck. 
But he said, I don't want a paycheck. I want to build my own business. And that's when his dad actually put them in the right direction. Said, look, we, I can't show you how to make money, but you can go to your friend's dad and ask him because his friend's dad was a very successful entrepreneur. So he went to his friend's dad and sure he asked him, he said, and his rich dad told him, look, only entrepreneur knows how to make money. There's a difference between being an entrepreneur and being an employee because entrepreneur work for free. Employees work for paycheck. An employee does not need to know about money. An entrepreneur is always learning how to make money so they can make their money work for them. You're not getting paid because you're learning how to make money. And when you have a paycheck, you become an employee. After I got out of the military, I said, I want to be self-employed. But I started in banking. But I'm working my nine to five, then I'm like, well, there's a problem here because I'm an employee. I don't want to be an employee. So when I got out of the military and I entered the corporate world, working for a major banking firm, JP Morgan Chase. And I look back to myself and reflect back to all the books that I've read. I said, that's really not where I want to be. And uh, I had to change that. Sometimes in life, you have to take risk because without risk, without failure, there is no success. And at that point, I took the risk of leaving a nine to five with a salary job, with a baby expected on the way, and everybody was looking at me like I was crazy. So I went into the mortgage industry, learned it. I wasn't getting paid for months because you know what I was doing? I was learning. I was learning what they didn't teach us in school. And a real teacher can be your bankers, your accountants, your lawyers. And I quickly learned the business and within six months of being with that firm, I was the top loan officer. And I made more money in my first, first six months than I ever made in like the past two years. So at that point I had the taste for it. And I quickly changed, I kept taking chances, have dreams, have life goals, monthly goals, daily goals, and work towards those goals every day until you accomplish them. Not every goal that you have you, you have set will, will be accomplished because you will run into failures. You will lose, but don't let that stop you. Just keep your dream in mind and set your goals. And every step of the way, like I said, God always has a plan and is always with you. You know, being an entrepreneur and being successful, you can make all the money in the world that you want, but that's not so important in life. It's, always important to be grateful. You know, thank, thank God for grace. Nothing in life is impossible. So Robert Kiyosaki went to his regular dad, his PhD dad, I call him, and said, well, if he asked him to purchase something or buy something, a nice car, something expensive, his dad will tell him, well, what do you think? I can't afford it. I'm not made out of money. But when he went to his rich dad, he, he gave him a different answer. He didn't say, I can't afford it. He didn't say, I can't do it. He opened it with a question. He said, well, how do I do it? A question opens the mind and a statement closes the mind. So always be open-minded, be grateful, put God first. Awesome. Mm. When you make a statement, you close a mind, but when you ask a question, you open a mind. I think that has to be one of the most powerful things that, that I've ever heard. Um, thank you, Mr. Petion, for your, your outlook, entrepreneurship, and setting goals. Uh, guys, I'd like to open the floor uh, to ask any questions. Uh, thank you very much for, for, for this um, eye-opening, uh, you know, snippet of what probably is in store. Uh, um, my my uh, contribution is that... Um, it's, it's the issue of setting goals is so critical that uh, for you to be able to see that I'm actually progressing, you need to set those goals. Otherwise, if you just live a uh, life anyhow, any, any direction goes, any success or failure is unnoticed because you really don't have a set goal. So yes, I think um, I, I like the idea of making sure that you have goals you have dreams, you have aspirations, and if uh, and to make them even more uh, realistic, 
writing them down, ticking them off. It it gives you this um, uh, energy to to set new goals as you begin to tick and realize that I thought I could not do this, but I did it. So it right. opens you even more for 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 greater things to come. Thank you very much. As far as like an entrepreneur and versus the employee, um, a lot of people will say, okay, entrepreneur. I, I went out, like for instance, me, I go out and I open up a company, which is my company here is Long Island Bottles and Cans. Right now, I'm nothing more than a bona fide hire employee because I do more work now than I did when I was just working for the company. What, what would you say for a person like me without anything to go and do to become an entrepreneur? Uh, entrepreneurs are probably the hardest working people ever. We have the employee, they do their job from nine to five. And after that, they close the books, they're done. An entrepreneur, you're working 24 seven because you know what? You're working on your dream. You're not working to make somebody else's dream come true. And if you still have that goal and you have that mindset, you want to reach that goal, it will take hard work. Sometimes you work for years without a paycheck. So don't go start as an entrepreneur and say you want everything to happen overnight. If you want to build something great, you have to spend the time to learn how to make money. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, yes, you're right. Because, um, I got my business. A lot of people would quit with, with my business and the employees, and I'm not even receiving no money. I'm coming home. The wife's looking at me. Well, where's the money? <laughs> where's the money? That's our job, Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I say it's coming. It's coming. It's like it's like when you you first dig the well and you're pumping and you're pumping. Nothing's coming out. You tend to want to give up, but you keep pumping and you keep pumping. And then all of a sudden now there's a drip. And that one little drip, it can change your whole life because if you're starving for water, that one little drip will, that taste of it will make you continue to pump because you know there's something down there for you. And once it starts to flow, um, you don't have to pump as much anymore, but you do have to continue to pump. There's a lot of work that goes into it up front that you don't immediately see the results of, but once the results come in, it's like a avalanche effect, right? It just rolls and rolls and you have to do less work the more you go along, but are people willing to do that uh, upfront work initially? That's a great message, don't quit too soon. Is what you're doing working? And if not, take a look at it and find another way to make it work. It doesn't necessarily yes, mean- I, I I, I like the way you put it, that you have to review and check where have you gone wrong. Because sometimes the dream is possible. And remember, the, the greater the dream or the greater the, the, the rewards thereof, the tougher the journey. But if you know and you know that God has put this thing in you, the enemy is also trying to stop it. So if you give up too soon or without doing the necessary but it's important that if you if you have the conviction that this is your dream, this is what you need to do, there will always be your role in that rather than quit. The dreams that we get are always bigger than us. They transcend our time. But it's important for us to know that we have a role to play. We play it perfectly. We may not be the ones to produce the outcome, but we are setting the foundation for the out greater outcome. For every new level, there's a new devil. So every time you reach a new goal, there's going to be a new devil chasing you to, to try to remove that from you. So thank you for that. Thank Boris, you. we do not want to forget our infamous doctor here from Peru. Um, thank you for being here with us also this morning. Thank you for inviting me today. And yeah, say uh, I want to say hi to Miss, Miss Eddie. Uh, yes, um, for me, uh, the difference between employee and entrepreneur is fate. If you if you wanna if you wanna depend on the human or, or you want to depend on God, I think depending of human, normally you're gonna be in statu quo where you think you have your your life salute, but it's not real because you're always gonna depend of what somebody is is giving you uh, the pain every month. But if you fight by by faith, we're gonna say that that way. If you live by faith, if you depend on God, 
I think the entrepreneur is going to be successful. What do you think, Mr. Petty? I 100% agree with you. You put God first in your life, everything you will be able to accomplish. It. Yeah. I love to work with God and my business and my entrepreneur. I it's think good. this is the more secure way to go and do whatever God wants for you. Always going to be the good for you and your family. The most secure way is God. Thank it's you. Yes. And one of the things you just mentioned, listening to other people and the negativity in life is surround yourself with the people that you want to be. So if you if you rely on God and positive energy, people with positive energy, then they will help uplift you. When God is guiding our life and entrepreneur or whatever you want to do with him, and then he's going to bring those people who's going to help you to do for, for other people also uh, helping them. You know, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Um, I have a, a question myself, um, Mr. Pedia. One, one of the things that you mentioned very early on in the conversation, uh, you mentioned something about it wasn't God's plan for you. Did you know very early on what God's plan was for you? Did you have a feeling all along that this is something that you were not supposed to be doing? Or, you know, how, how did that play in? That plan will come to you. But my ultimate goal was how to learn to work for myself and how to learn to be an entrepreneur and how to learn how to make money work for me instead of working for money. Don't just rely on you. Is the man above. So one of the things we do experience as entrepreneurs ourselves is a period of drought, essentially. And that drought can last a lot longer sometimes than we expect. And when we do have partners or we have family members or friends who don't see the value of educating ourselves without getting paid or working without getting paid, you know, how do you keep yourself focused on that end goal so that these other things or other people who think, you know, working for that paycheck is, is, should be your, your end goal versus what you believe it is. A lot of people that work for a paycheck, they always feel secure. Like they said, the government is going to take care of them. They will have their retirement. However, things also happen in life. You don't give up. You have to adapt in life. Uh, you have to adapt. I'm like a chameleon. If you can <laughs> drop me anywhere, I change colors. Why? Because I'm being adaptive to my environment. Sometimes the entrepreneur doesn't, won't, won't gonna be successful. It's just going the way where everybody goes. Sometimes you have to do something which God said, but without thinking logically. Uh, to me, being an entrepreneur, um, like Mr. Pettyon says, requires not being fearful, okay? And not being afraid to, to take risks money will come money will go you know as he indicated you know we invested in uh, 401ks housing market these things crash they're not as reliable as people think they are neither you know is a job and as a, an entrepreneur there's a there's a level of nervousness that may come along with it because you're venturing out into something that most people aren't willing to or have the confidence to venture out into. So it requires a great deal of faith and confidence, you know, but it's one of those things I feel like once you learn it, no one can take it away from you. All right, I don't know anybody who runs their own business who decides, ah, you know what, I, I'm just gonna go back to a nine to five. If their business doesn't work out, they find another business to build on. They find something else to build on because once you realize the freedom, yes, there's a lot of stress, a lot of work that comes with running and operating your own business, but it also gives you a level of freedom to know that you don't have to rely on something else. You rely on yourself, you rely on God. It is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. That's in the Bible, Deuteronomy 8.18. We talk about it all the time. Yes. But once you know how to do these things, guys, no one's gonna take that skill away from you. It's like swimming. It's like riding a bike. Once you know how to do it, you'll always know how to do it. It doesn't matter if money comes and goes. It doesn't matter if you're successful one minute and you're down the, the rabbit hole the next minute. You know how to build it up. You know how to do it over again. To me, I think that is the ultimate goal or the ultimate benefit or reward 
of being an entrepreneur. Someone who is an entrepreneur will never have to worry about money, okay? Because you will always know how to sustain yourself because you know how to take risks. And it's okay if you're in the building process of learning these things. Those are the life skills, in my opinion. Learning how to swim is a life skill. You don't ever want to get thrown into a pool or water and, and not know how to get out of it. You know, Mr. Petty, I made a very good point in, in the beginning of this. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of formal education. I, I just, I'm not a big fan of paying for it. I think it should be free. If you're not in a formal education system or a structure, look around you. Your parents are your instructors. Your accountant is your instructor. Your doctor is your instructor. Your mechanic is your instructor. There are people around you every day that have skills that you don't necessarily have. They have knowledge that you haven't yet gained. And it's the importance of networking also, either informally or formally, but forging relationships where you can learn from others who can also benefit from learning from you. And that's where your, your mental database is, is, is going to be built off of. And that's what's going to give you the skills and the knowledge and the confidence to be able to, to build the, the lifestyle that, that you need. To me, um, an entrepreneur is a relationship builder. Sometimes people will sit in their living room every day, sit on that couch, they're watching TV, but they're praying to God every day to show me, show me the way, show me the way, but they never leave, step foot outside that door to go find the way. Find. If you're walking, you will find the way. The path isn't always visible. It's a very narrow path. And yes, you have to be. In, you have to be in tune with God. God radio. You have yeah. to go close. <laughs> if not, you're never gonna hear your voice. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you're just on the wrong station. You gotta change stations and and tune in and and listen. Come closer to Him. Yes. And be willing I to take action. I tell people all the time, listen, you're not a rock, just move. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, a, that's an excellent point. Well, um, Mr. Penner, I do want to thank you tremendously for, for joining with us today. Very all right, very. gentlemen, I want to thank you all for joining us today. In our next episode, we want to discuss the importance our relationships play in our walk in faith and business and the challenges that we face as families, as couples and relationships. Sometimes it's our biggest support and sometimes it's our biggest challenge. Thank you guys for joining us today. Till next time, have a good night.